Hi, uh, welcome everybody. I'm, I'm Sylvan. I'm the Executive Creative Director for uh, Technical Games. And I'm going to talk to you today about uh, the road to all real time. Um, I want to bring you to a journey through the, the story of, of real time uh, workflow and real time animation. So what we will cover today is it's uh, where uh, did we start it? Where are we coming from uh, to go from the beginning of real time to now? And I want to show you this, this several paths that are working in parallel between PC, game consoles, and uh, and the workstation. Then we're gonna we're gonna work on. The, then I'm gonna follow up with a, a short review of the real time based entertainment visual story. Where did it started and and where we at now? And you're gonna see the progression. Um, and then for to follow up, we're, we're gonna do conversions. Uh, then to follow up, we're gonna talk about the recent convert convergence of real-time engines and um, and uh, real-time being fully recognized uh, by the entertainment industry. Uh, and to finish, we'll, we'll talk about the unexpected paths that, that real-time um, based content took over the last few years um, with fashion, with sports, with esports. And, um, and that, that's going to be the, the whole story of that, that conversation. So. Uh, without any um, waiting, uh, let's start. So is is real time a new thing? You know, we we've been talking about real time a lot over the last uh, three, four, five years. Uh, as it seems like something that's something that is recent, but actually it's not recent at all. It's been there for around like two generations. So first, let's explore uh, our PC and gaming consoles uh, started and and that kind of short history. Uh, first, it all started with the gaming consoles. In the mid 70s, uh, up to the, the mid 80s, uh, those, those famous console uh, with, with Killer Shark, with the Space Invaders, um, with Pac Man, with Asteroid, with Pong, were the, the core of real time entertainment. Um, some of you might have seen that, some of you are, might, might be too young to, 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 to experience that, but it's this is the core. Of, of uh, um, the entertainment real-time industry. Arcade gaming console uh, slowly vanished and have really have been replaced by the, the gaming console slowly but surely uh, since the, the 80s, basically. So let's uh, have a look at the, the, the history of uh, the gaming console. So the home gaming console, in the term, in the term home gaming, uh, that's a different concept you know, from the, from the arcade. Arcade, you have to go to the arcade. Uh, with multiple uh, consoles, the home gaming console, you were able to bring that entertainment home, and that's a diff that's a brand new concept from the from the mid 70s or the 80s, and that 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 thing evolved uh, radically up to now, and and now the gaming consoles are entertainment center, game center, and are bringing a kind of fully integrated form of entertainment at home. So you can say that it started in the mid 70s with the the Odyssey, then the Atari, of course, and and slowly but surely uh, went up to the the, the what we call the PlayStation's and uh, the Xbox and uh, the Wii, the the Switch recently, the PS4, PS5, and now with the the, the new Xbox um, console. So, so there's been a lot of uh, evolution there. Uh, it's about 50 years of evolution, which seems to be a lot, but considering the the history of, of of imagery in general, uh, or the history of cinema, it's it's even not even half of the history of film, so it's not that uh, that old, um, still a young industry. So that's something to 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 that is really like going to strike you is the evolution of the between the eighties and now uh, from the consoles. Um, you can see the first games like uh, Pitfall. Uh, Sonic, uh, Lara Croft, uh, Final Fantasy, and then then the next generation with the PS, the PlayStation's, uh, Grand Theft Auto, Journey, Portal, Call of Duty, Last of Us, uh, Red Dead, God of War, and and up to the very last games that that came out uh, uh, in 22. So you can see the visual story from something pretty simple to to highly complex. Um, Graphics uh, that that happened in a very short amount of time. It's pretty impressive uh, compared to the history of arts of film. You know, it's it's uh, 
something that is really um, that evolved very quickly as the technology evolved very quickly. Um, uh, PC gaming, the PC gaming is about 40 years old as well, and uh, basically the, the the imagery at the beginning was very very crude, very basic. That's that's Quake. Uh, that's the very first Quake, which at the time was a big. Uh, um, a major game with Doom because it was showing 3D graphics with some kind of shading, as you can see, uh, some basic 3D models, uh, some super basic textures, some effects, you know, it's particles. Uh, so it, it was it was the core of, of modern you know, console and, and PC entertainment. It has all the basics from 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 the modern gaming uh, visuals, basically. Uh, there was also one of the big deal of the PC game is bringing the, the what we call interactive storytelling. Uh, interactive was not super interactive, you know. That's uh, uh, you had some kind of basic sprites with the uh, with, uh, with some animation and then dialogue based um, uh, interaction. But I was a first way of interacting with a with basically your PC and and telling a story that you drive yourself. Um, so the the early PC games were of course. Uh, Doom is a big, one of the biggest landmarks of, of, of the early uh, PC games. That's, like I said, it's basic textures, basic 3D, uh, VFX, but there's also like an interesting UI that's very new to that, uh, that, uh, that form of games uh, that is very precise and that, that's going to basically uh, uh, set tone for all the UIs for, for years to come. Um, the Mac was also part of that, and uh, that, that Shuffle Pack game was also interesting on the, on the first Macs of the, the 90s. Uh, it was driven by uh, PCs, there were desktop PCs, um, you can see like Windows 2000, uh, IBM PCs, so they were like pretty, uh, pretty basic PCs, but they were more powerful than any of the gaming console at the time. Um, you can see the iconic games like Diablo, and uh, and of course um, the Night of the Old Republic that was uh, one of the, the, the biggest PC game at this time. So as you can see here, the evolution in the PC gaming, uh, the visual and technical evolution is pretty um, it's pretty obvious over the last uh, between ninety one and and two thousand sixteen. You were able to display three D graphics uh, from a purely two D game. You 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 started to introduce some three D elements. Uh, a lot of uh, with simulation for, for that particular game uh, with, with civilization. So you, you we were able to to have a game that is more interactive and, and visually more rich, uh, thanks to the, the new uh, graphic card that was that was being um, uh, developed on the PC. So today, uh, PC gaming it's uh, it's a bit like Star Wars. You know, your console is, there's all kind of light in there. It's uh, it's very powerful. Um, you you have you have sound. You have uh, you can have multiple screens, and then the quality, the hardware is, is pretty compared to the hardware in the, in the even in, in the late 90s and early 2000s. It's, it's pretty amazing what the, the chips can do now um, and how many polygons they can display. So uh, they have similar performances than consoles, and now you have a kind of convergence of of, of, uh, of performances and quality uh, between consoles and, and PCs. Uh, as you can see in the new games like Elder Ring or or Halo Infinite, you have a quality that is really uh, similar, or sometimes, sometimes I won't say better, but it's it's uh, as rich as the, the the consoles, as PS5 or Xbox. Let's talk now about the real time based uh, entertainment visual story. Um, we 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 saw the evolution from from the beginning to to, to current days. Uh, let's explore a little bit uh, what happened and and see you know for for. For real, what happens uh, in terms of visual story? So, as you can see, the, the, at the beginning of, of the game entertainment, tennis, what's called that, that brought pong as well, uh, same name. Uh, tennis uh, was extremely basic 2D, uh, visually uh, the minimum information, a couple of cubes, and then it started to evolve with, with Battlezone, Mario, Super Mario, with games like God of War, Charted. Red Dead up to now with, with, for example, NBA 2K that is fully realistic, um, uh, and 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 really that shows up the, the evolution of that that medium and that visual style over just 50 years. You know, we look at from tennis to NBA 2K, the evolution is is pretty amazing. Went from 
from kind of a statistically basically informational to, to fully realistic. Um, so 50 years seems a lot, but it's still a young industry. So I want to talk now about the evolution between uh, film and uh, the game imagery and the film imagery. So as you can see here, uh, over the first 50 years of the film um, history, the imagery didn't really evolve. Uh, the technique evolved, of course. The cameras got better, uh, the film stock got better, uh, lighting got better. Um, but the, the, the imagery was more or less uh, similar. You were still using black and white. Um, we're still using some pretty heavy cameras up, up to the 60s, of course, when Godard started to, to use handheld cameras. Uh, but it slowly evolved the first 60 years. From the, the from the 60s to, to, to the 90s, there was a lot of exploration, visual milestones, you know, Space Odyssey, The Godfather, Violin Done, the first use of uh, of ice high speed uh, film stock, for example, that that enabled to to film some uh, some candles. It was a big deal technically and then visually. Of course, Star Wars, huge milestone about uh, using VFX, CG, and then. Uh, creating a kind of a, uh, an open path for, for the new imagery. Uh, there's a Raven, uh, Blade Runner, of course. Uh, and then, as you can see, uh, during the, the 90s until now, stylistically, the imagery evolved way more radically toward like toward something more, more, more defined, more exploratory, like Delicatessen or Chunkin Express, Private Ryan, Amelie, Avatar, of course, Inception, Gravity, up to Matrix, and many other movies. So, so but you, s you just see like a between like a 1902 and now it's about 120 years, and then it evolved uh, very slowly. That's something that speaks for itself. It's a lighting fast evolution compared to film, like from the trip to the moon, 1902 to Moonfall, 2022, uh, 120 years, and and. Uh, and a lot of slow evolution. Well, from from tennis to our Forbidden West horizon, uh, just 50 years, and that's that's pretty amazing how it evolved in 50 years. So uh, let's explore now a different path that's been taken uh, into the, the history of real time uh, animation, real time content. Uh, that's the workstation. So we, we saw that we work with consoles. Uh, we started to work with PCs. And real time was displayed through, through those two uh, hardware, basically, uh, platforms. But there was a third path that was more like a high end, and that's the workstation. So uh, I'm saying, may the fridge be with you. There's a good reason because those workstations were literally the size of a very decent fridge, um, taking insane amount of power uh, and costing the price of a, of a pretty nice house um, anywhere. So you can see, like, Compared to a to to, to regular uh, workstation, so you have the Onyx, the the, the Silicon Graphics that, that were very uh, widespread across the industry, um, but they were absolutely uh, cost prohibitive and and, uh, and and required a lot of investment, so that was not for everyone to to use them. We could call the the, the proto virtual production the first uh, first examples of virtual production. So basically, virtual production, it's, it seems to be something that, that is very new, that started the, over the last five years, but actually it's a 30-year-old um, uh, form of, of real-time entertainment. And, and one of the pioneers of that is uh, Jim Henson, um, that, that of course created the Muppets, and that is an amazing uh, uh, puppeteer uh, creator. And he, he started in the early 90s, I think 1990, uh, a system that you can capture uh, his hand moves with a device and to create a, a real-time character displayed on silicon graphics called waldo uh, that's the character you can see in the middle there uh, and that's that that system was very uh very revolutionary at this time and then inspired uh, a lot of uh, other um, companies to, to to do that kind of, of work so so basically, Jim Henson was using Silicon Graphics workstation, as you can see in the video, um, to, to display in real time some pretty basic character. But at that time, there was a, an, a, a huge uh, achievement uh, to, just to do that. So, so it's, a, it's a first step toward like, uh, what we see today with, uh, with virtual production. So next step is um, another company that has started to do 
uh, Pure Soul Production is, is Media Lab in Paris in the early 90s. Uh, that's a company uh, I help creating. And uh, we were really inspired by Jim Henson's uh, work on, on puppeteering. And we started to develop a, a puppet system, uh, basically a performance system, a performance capture system that was based on magne uh, magnetic capture. It was not optical. So you can see it was very limited. Uh, there was basically a three meter by three meter uh, square that you can play around that you couldn't do anything else. And uh, you had to carry that kind of giant tail of cables. And uh, the puppeteer was with his glove was basically moving expression on one end and moving phonemes with the other one and with a joystick pushing some expression, pushing some blend shapes. So, so we had to kind of uh, uh, design the kind of blend shape system. Um, so that was very interesting at the time. Um, so that, that was kind of a pioneering uh, experience as well, and it was it wasn't only research, but it was uh, some some application in uh, in TV and, and TV series, as you can see. So basically, like real time was used for uh, virtual production, uh, live TV, uh, CG characters displayed in real time onto live TV. Like you can see, Bugs Bunny. Uh, there was Donkey Kong, uh, Channel Four. That's something I did for Channel Four. So that was really a um, widespread uh, use of, of, of real-time animation in virtual production early on. Uh, what happened there? Um, I think it, it kind of started to die uh, slowly for the for the, the, the years 2000, 2005, uh, and, and was uh, was kind of put on the side because the workstation uh, was com were completely replaced by, by PC gaming and then by gaming workstations. So those giant fridges uh, ended up, you know, uh, on storage and uh, as a piece of uh, history in, in uh, technological museums. Uh, so that transition, like, uh, took about uh, about 20 years to go back to it today. But that's interesting. That's an interesting path, basically. What is interesting? It's not only virtual production. Uh, you know, putting 3D characters into live action for TV, but it was also like a, a, at the beginning uh, a lot of. Uh, uh, TV series and real-time episodic TV series. So we work on something called Chicken Clyde that was fully real-time. Um, ten, I think it was ten times ten minutes for for Canal Plus, uh, and it was Donkey Kong, uh, full TV series, but done in real time, captured in real time with that, that performance and capture animation, and then uh, pre-rendered in uh, in, uh, in CG after that. So that was one of the first use of a uh, real-time performance capture and virtual production to do TV series. So that happened, you know, uh, over the course of the last uh, 30 years. Uh, thing evolved very quickly uh, up to today. So to basically today's uh, production tools, um, they are IN uh, workstations. More or less, everybody's using the same workstation. They kind of look like a, like 2001 HAL, actually. But um, uh, it's high performance on your desktop, uh, on your desk, basically, with, with two screens, with the with the amazing audio, with, with great performances, and that's that's that that kind of workstation is going to be used across the entertainment industry uh, to produce real time. We don't have a kind of separate path of consoles and workstation and PCs. We basically use the same to 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 create uh, content. So all the the live action game virtual production, they they were converging into the the same kind of workflow, just using workstation. Uh, PC basically a super boosted PC and using different kind of engines. So we have Unity, Unreal, Cry, and some proprietary engine from the game companies because Frostbite, Ubisoft, Snowdrop, uh, Activision Infinity War, Call of Duty, Lumberyard, Amazon Game, and so on. So we have same kind of uh, platform, different engines to create uh, real time content. There's a convergence of workflows. But there's a multiple uh, kind of outputs. So as you can see here, there's virtual production, uh, uh, LED-based uh, back projection, uh, virtual reality. There is stadium AR, uh, PC gaming, uh, even fashion and, and AR to choose your furniture. So it's it's pretty widespread now. Uh, it's not a niche market, but it's widespread throughout the the, the, internet, the entertainment industry. So let's let's explore now um, real time across the the whole industry with live action, VFX, virtual production, and games. Live action games, virtual production 
are powered by by extremely uh, powerful real-time engine like Unreal and Unity, and and then with performances that are unthinkable, that were unthinkable 20 years ago. So that that's uh, that's a big new thing for for real time today. So virtual performance and and uh, and virtual cinematography. So as as you see here, uh, it's more or less the same principle than 30 years ago, but the hardware is is vastly vastly improved. So you can see in the Lion King, in in, in regular productions. Uh, or, or TV-based production, or film-based production, um, the amount of, of polygons and content you can display is, is helps now like creating a, a very uh, integrated medium. We, we can we can show now things that were not able to show like four years ago. There was new workflows uh, introduced in VR in virtual production and VR um, called virtual scouting. Now you can use real-time uh, engines and real-time um, tools to create. Scouting for film, you can prepare your shoot, you can prepare complex camera coverage uh, way before the, the, the local, uh, the actual uh, shoot happens. So using um, scouting tools, uh, the third floor is, is, is using those tools for, for Game of Thrones, for example, and, and you have a lot of, of, uh, of, of options to, to select, you know, your location, explore your location, explore your camera coverage. So that's, that's a very interesting way of using real time. So of course, like with live action, um, recently you have a huge step forward with the large scale ED LED walls. Um, is it using like one single PC? No, it's using like a, uh, a large amount of of of, of, of um, it's using a large amount of workstation uh, connected together to, to to a large amount of, of LED screens modules. So as you can see, it could, it could be like uh, several meters. And, and and cover a large scope. So that's something extremely new. Uh, you can display now a large amount of polygons in real time on giant screens and, and kind of replace that old school uh, back projection by something extremely uh, uh, controllable. Uh, you can control your lighting, you can control uh, your sets, your position, and that's something that's a way of working that's been um, that's been spread out through the, 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 the IN films for the last few years and that, that that's still evolving and that that's very exciting for real time. So uh, another path for, for real time um, entertainment is the real time TV series. Uh, as you can see here, we, we started in the early 90s uh, and then came back. It came back with, with the Zufari um, it's been done recently. That's uh, uh, done on, on, on in Unreal. That's uh, Mr. Carton done in Unity. That's another scene in Unity. There was uh, a series from um, a short film from uh, from with Unity as well, using a Disney um, uh, content, Big Hero Five, and uh, recently some uh, some Fable uh, real time animated series. So as you can see, you know that that technique that started a few years ago, thirty years ago, is now in full uh, in, in full production and and uh, some to get maturity as well, because because real time engines. Enable us to create some some new ways of uh, of uh, creating TV series uh, without hours of rendering and then and, uh, the still animation, of course. But uh, you can work with your camera and virtual in virtual production uh, animation in real time is more flexible. So you have many ways to create a lot of content for and and be con controlling your content and for for a lower budget technically. So as you can see here, there's a lot of crossover projects. Uh, that are not really a film, not really a game, using Unreal engines or, or other engines. And uh, as you can see with that Matrix uh, project, uh, it's a kind of hybrid uh, crossover narrative project that is really interesting. And I can also open the path for for a new form of entertainment that is that is that is a crossover of film game, and uh, it's it's could be kind of a future of real time entertainment or a path for real time entertainment. As you can see here, uh, real time is becoming fashionable. Um, recently, there was a fashion week in Paris, and, and with an explosion of, of real time animation with metaverse uh, fashion shows, uh, NFT um, shows, you could buy like a real real outfit with a, a virtual outfit. You can you can customize your outfit. So that's something that is uh, unexpected in a in a industry that is kind of a conservative. That's been Working with the with traditional ways, of, you know, you are suing for real, uh, but that has been um, using that uh, 
that that new ways of, of generating like uh, uh, creating objects and, and clothes and uh, and selling them um, and that's very fascinating that's something that is um, kind of unexpected but extremely uh, interesting and uh, that, that that that's very uh, the, it's an interesting way of, of using real time uh, something new as well is the use of uh, real time for AR, particularly in sports. Uh, you've seen, uh, if you're in the US, you probably have seen the, some of the Super Bowl or some of the the, 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 the NFL thing with the, the NFL games with the halftime shows with giant players, you know, that, that you can see through your phones. And for esports, you can see that that uh, AR, uh, real time content, is used for, for big events or smaller TV events, uh, as you can see with the uh, League of Legends. The championship with the giant dragon flying over the stadium uh, in air over your phone. So that's a kind of new way of using uh, real time and for for mass uh, uh, spectacle. You know, for for sports was kind of a not really too much uh, involved with real time. Beside the TV graphics, now you can you can be at the stadium, sit down, and, and have a kind of a real time experience with your phone. Uh, and it would be an addition to the to the to, to the sports experience. So that that's a big plus for for any, uh, any any sports brand or sports entertainment. So yeah, as you can see here, the, the game industry reached a certain maturity. Uh, now you can have more realism. You can have immersive stories. Uh, you you can you can work with. You can get immersive lighting. You can change your lighting, get a sunset, choose your time of day, uh, choose customize your character. So the so the choices the players have are, are pretty pretty insane. As you can see, that there's way more diversity in games. Like uh, the heroes, and there's more female heroes. Like with Last of Us, with uh, Horizon, uh, Forbidden Path, for example. So that that's a big thing. That that so so technology technology helped us. Uh, Create characters that are a bit more diverse, that are not like the burly cowboy or the the you know the knight with armor, but you can so have more uh, create more sensitive content and and content that is more um, uh, complex uh, and, and show characters with more complex emotions, and that that's the kind of new um, and the benefits of that kind of a technological maturity. You can now show content that is that is a bit more. It's a bit more complex, and, and uh, uh, so where are we going? You know, we don't know yet. It's just a 50-year-old industry, uh, but there's no midlife crisis, and, and it's a bright future from from where we started with Pong and now with the new uh, PS5 games uh, coming out. That's uh, there's, there's a 50 years of evolution, but we're still young, so that that's something to to be really happy about and uh, to be hopeful for the future of uh, with entertainment. So that was a short journey about across the the, the real time uh, history, you know, per se. Uh, so thank you very much for for joining us uh, today. It was a pleasure to talk to you. I hope to to talk to you again soon, um, and I hope you enjoyed that presentation. Thanks.